Hi, my name is Daniel Casey. And today we're going to be looking at a, an example of a flood frequency analysis. This is part two of our presentation. In this example, we're going to be looking at one of the simplest distributions that we can use, which is the normal distribution. The normal distribution is given by this equation right here, where one of the one of the characteristics of the normal distribution is that the mean equals the median, which is also equal, equal to, the, to the mode. One important aspect of the normal distribution is that we can work with the reduced variable z, which is equal to, the, to, the, to a discharge value, for instance, minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Now, although the normal distribution is simple, we do not use the normal distribution in flood frequency analysis, but we, we use the two-parameter log normal distribution, which is basically if you take the log of discharge, and then the logarithmic of discharge would be normally distribution, distributed. And that's what we're going to do in this example. Now, if we look at the normal distribution from a reduced variable perspective, basically we can look at it from having a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and basically establishing tables with, with this distribution, which would cover all of the cases that we need to cover. And this is exactly what we have in many of the books. If you look at some of the standard normal distribution table, this is what you get, uh, which is your reduced variable Z, for instance. And you have the range of probability from 0 to 0.5. Or if you want to look at both uh, part of the graph, you basically add 0.5 to the value here. Now, in statistical hydrology, there are distribution that we use for floods, but there is also distribution that we use for low flows. In the case of floods, we can use the two-parameter log normal distribution, which will be the case here. But you can also use the three-parameter log normal distribution, the Gumbel distribution, the log Pearson type 3. And one of the distribution which has been used very much in the recent years is the generalized extreme value distribution, or also called the GEV distribution. The distribution function for low flows, uh, we generally use the three-parameter Weibull distribution for representing low flows. Now, if we move to an example, here we're going to use the data for the annual maximum discharge for Catamaran Brook. We can get the data either from sampling a particular river, or in this case, we are taking data directly from the uh, Water Canada Survey site, which is the station 01BP002. If we extract the data from uh, the website, we get basically the annual discharge for 14 years in this particular case, which would be 1990 to 2003. And this would be your annual maximum discharge, 5.39 for the first year, for instance. Now, the second thing we do is we copy these discharge over and we rank them from the lowest to the highest. So this would be your, um, your lowest discharge was in 1999 at 3.68 and your highest discharge was in 1991 at 13. And given the ranks, then you can calculate the frequency or the cumulative frequency for each of the event. The cumulative frequency is given by this function n, which is the rank, over n plus 1, which is n here, the large n is the sample size. So it would be 1 over uh, 2 up to 1 over 15 because uh, it's 14 plus 1. And this gives you the frequency as we can see here. Now, the next thing is to calculate your reduced variable z of the normal distribution. You can either do that through going through some of the tables, and we We'll present an example of that in a few minutes, or you can get these values directly from Excel using the norm inverse function here, E1 being the value which you're looking at, which is this value here, and 0 to 1. So if I have my discharge again here, my ranked, my discharge, and then my frequencies, the value of Z here is calculated using this Excel function. Now, if you take the natural logarithmic of this value right here, that will give you your two-parameter log normal distribution. 
So the next thing you do, once that you have your Z values and you have your log values, you can plot your Z values again on the X axis and your log value on your Y axis. Or you can plot directly the discharge on the Y axis and just, just transform the axis in the logarithmic form in Excel if you want. And this is what I'm going to do. But before we do that, you can also calculate your Z values if you're not doing it through Excel. You can calculate them using a table. For instance, in this particular case, if I'm looking for a probability of 0 .0, 0 0.067, for instance, I can just take the table here. And basically what I'm looking at is I'm looking for this side of the table. So it would be 0.5 minus this probability function or probability of 0 0.067, which would be 0.433. And then you look up into the table at 0.433, which would be in this case, rather than being plus 1.5, it will be minus 1.5, which would give you the value. You can do this for every discharge, or you can do it in Excel, as I've mentioned before. Now, if you plot the Z values or the reduced variable of your normal distribution against your log values of discharge, either in a logarithmic form or in the normal form here, and then log your Y-axis in Excel, this should give you a straight line. So you only need to plot this, then put a straight line to this, and basically estimate what would you be your 100-year event, your 20-year event, the 10-year flood, and the two-year flood, based on these Z values that you, have, that you can calculate uh, right here. There's another way of doing this, is you, can, you make the calculations rather than doing it graphically. What you need to do is you take all of your log transform data, you calculate the mean and the standard deviation of your log transform data. And in this case, it would be 1.783. And the standard deviation would be 0 0.363. And you go into the table, as I've mentioned before, uh, to calculate the Z values for every recurrence interval that you're looking for. In this case, I'm looking for recurrence interval between 2 and 100 years. I know the F values. I know the Z values, which I can calculate. And if I plug the Z values, the mean and the standard deviation into this equation, which is basically just the exponential of this value, then I can calculate the discharge QT for the two-year flood, which would be 5.95. And it will be uh, the 100-year flood would be 13.83, for instance. This, again, is for the two-parameter log normal distribution. Now, these plots is the same as the one before. Basically, each observation and each Z values, but the red line here, rather than drawing it yourself on a piece of paper, for instance, basically it's calculated using the normal distribution with log transform data. So that's basically it for this presentation. Carrying out a flood frequency analysis using a simple distribution such as the two-parameter log normal distribution is as simple as this.